So the first thing that I want you to think about, and I don't want you to say anything just yet, but I want you to think in your mind about these two things. What it means to take the difference of averages versus what it takes, what it means to take the average of differences. Okay, so don't say anything out loud yet. Just think about that for a second. Difference of averages versus the average of differences. Okay, so what would, how would you verbalize the difference between those two? What do you think? Perfect. I like that. That's a good thing. Uh, very simply, one of them has two averages, and one of them has one. So that's a very that's a key component. Okay. So which one has the two averages? Okay. This top one. So you have to take the average of one group and the average of a second group, and then get the difference between those two averages. Okay. So we will have two means, and when we do the we will do a two-sample t-test, a two-sample t-test, all right, whenever we do our test, versus this, average of the differences. So what happens there? What do you get first? Good. You will take the difference of all your data first and then get the average of that whole group. So you will end up having one average of those differences, and when we do the calculator wise, it'll just be a t test, okay, of paired data. Uh, because this is paired data, we get those differences in the paired data first and then average it. Okay, good. So it's important. Uh, on Thursday and Friday, we learned about the two sample t test chapter 24 on one day, and then we learned about the paired data on the other. Now we're going to kind of recognize that those two are there, and you need to pay attention to what's the differences between them and how to word the differences between them. So if we take a look over here at your page 30, then this first one says the difference of averages, of course, we just talked about. You have two separate averages. You have your mu1, and you are subtracting your mu2, and calculator-wise, you're doing a two-sample t-test. Okay, whereas that average of differences, you are doing the mu of that set of differences, 1 minus 2. And we are doing a t-test, and it's because it is a t-test for paired data. All right, so we want to practice that. Okay, we want to practice being able to read a situation and decide um, which one of those situations it is because you calculate them differently. Um, one of them, you do two sets of conditions. One of them, you do one thing in the calculator. The other one, you do just one set of conditions and a different thing in the calculator. So we're going to use these phrases, hypothesis test for two means or a hypothesis test for matched pairs. Matched pairs, paired data, those are interchangeable. And then also, we'll circle if it's a difference of two averages versus the average, one average, of the differences. All right, so let's look at this first one. Here we go. An experiment is conducted to determine whether intensive tutoring, which is covering a great deal of material in a fixed amount of time, is more effective than paced tutoring, which is covering less material in that same amount of time. Two randomly chosen groups are tutored separately and then administered proficiency tests. Use a significance level of alphas less than 0.05 and so on. So what kind of design does this lead you to believe we're dealing with here? Two means or paired data? I agree. Two separate groups. In fact, in the next sentence, which I didn't read, it says let mu of 1 represent the population mean for this group and mu of 2. So it is two separate means, which means we will have the difference of two separate averages. So this one was hypothesis test for two means and the difference of those two averages. All right. B. Does right or left-handedness affect how fast people type. Random samples of students from a typing class are given a typing speed, 
or in words per minute, and the results are compared. Significance levels for the test is at 0.10. Because you are looking for a difference between the groups in either direction, meaning the right-handed faster than the left or vice versa, this is a two-tailed test, which don't let this extra thing affect you. Being two-tailed has nothing to do with how many groups there are. That's just the, null hypo the alternative hypothesis would be using a not equal to, but that doesn't have anything to do with which one of these it is. Okay. So what would this be? Two separate groups or a matched pair scenario? What is it? It is two separate groups. You're not going to have a right-handed and then first and then a left-handed later or separate, do the separate things. They are two separate groups. So we have difference of averages. All right. So then I want you to take a few moments and do the next page. There are four problems on this. Do those four problems in about two or three minutes, and then we'll check them. <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and check those, okay? So this first one, we had some plants, and then they did something. They applied the fertilizer, and then he measured them two weeks later, and, um, and so on. So what is this talking about? Before and after. So these were matched pairs, okay? So they had groups of stocks doing those two different things. They're matched up because they would be like stocks and like ones. So we're going to average, just get one average of those differences. Okay, here we have a person before and after. So what's that one going to be? Matched pairs, get one average of those differences. Good. Here we have information. We get an average of the men and an average of the women. So what does that mean? Two separate means, and we'll get the difference between two separate averages. And then finally, we're going to have a manager's salary before and after that particular manager takes a Ph under, takes uh, getting a PhD. Okay, so what's that one? Match pairs, and we're going to get the average of the differences in their salaries. All right, very good. Now. Before I have you go on to the assignment for today, which is going to be this, we're going to go and check your homework on pages 26 to 29. But tomorrow we will be quizzing. And so what this pages 32 and 33 has for you is a phantoms and a panic for each kind of problem, a matched pair and a two mean. Okay? And I'll be walking around helping you with all the wording and making sure you're getting your conditions right and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, because the test is coming up this Friday, I want us to, we got lots of practice to do between now and then. So I want you to start the review. Uh, pages 48 to 50, this is just three problems, one per page, okay, that you can do, which are ones you know how to do. All right, so let's go over the... Um, homework that we did and take a look at you and if you included all some little details that you were supposed to do. So here we go. Page 26. All right, this is a, after, a before and after, so it's definitely paired. So let's kind of check some wording and such. So here we go. This first thing, I'm, I'm not going to pull out the AP grading guidelines for time's sake. I really hope to be able to do that at some point, but um, for now we'll not do that. So here we go. Um, mu, I did A minus B, and you could say that it is the average difference in manual dexterity who completes the 60 program, or maybe you want to say the average of the differences. So either say average difference or the average of the differences. Has to be both those two words in there. Um, the null hypothesis is mu of A minus B is zero, and we wanted to see if the manual dexterity increased so the average difference increased randomly this is conditions for one group randomly selected people stated 12 is less than 10 percent of all such people who complete the program and then make sure you got this each one of those people's um, scores each pair of score each person is independent of each other their ma manual dexterity stuff now here's another little detail I want you to check right now on your dot plot or your histogram, make sure that you labeled them, and on the left-hand side, it's number of people, but check your label 
for the bottom section down here. This, the, each one of these little pieces of data that you have in here is a difference. So down here, the label for this should be the difference in manual dexterity after minus before. I pretty much don't see how you could shorten that. Each one of these pieces of data is the difference in manual dexterity after minus before. And then the nearly normal model applies. You know, I've been really thinking about this thing where we're calling it one sample because I'm thinking we kind of, it's like we have t uh, two sets of data for one sample of people or one sample of subjects. So this part worries me. I need to research that. So uh, I don't think we really quabble over that part. It's typically we just talk about it being t-test for paired data or for matched pairs. So make sure that t-test for paired data is in there. We had a t-score of 3.54, a p-value of 0 0.0023, and don't forget your df. T, 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 not Z. Must include the DF. All right. So now let's check your wording of your conclusion. So here we go. Of course, our P value is less than alpha. The, alpha, the symbol alpha is 0.05. We rejected the null. So look, I got some extra stuff in here. Too, too much words. I like listed the words twice. So you don't need to do that. So here's what I did. I said this. Since the P, I reject that the null hypothesis of or mu of a minus b equals zero. So I am rejecting that the mu of a minus b is zero. And now I'm going to do words about the alternative. Okay, so this sentence is about the null. This next sentence is about the alternative. And make sure you have in there that the average difference. So I have evidence that the average difference in manual dexterity for the people who completed the six weeks program has increased. Make sure that this average difference is in there or it will not be correct. Um, you can see it's greater than zero. Okay. All right. Questions on that? Okay. Now, next, I know that we had a dispute about this problem as to whether or not it was actually a two mean, two separate means problem, or if it is actually supposed to be paired. So I kind of got a little like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, and then I got to read it more carefully. And from what I read more carefully, you can clearly determine that it should be paired. And here's why. So let's have this little discussion. It's this sentence right here. Since pharmacies may store drugs under different conditions, that could affect the active ingredients, the amount of active ingredients in there. So this sentence here implies you need to control the pharmacy conditions. And how do we control all those little variables? By blocking it, which is basically what a matched pair or pairing it does. So we are essentially blocking or pairing by pharmacy. So matched pairs is a type of blocking to control all the qualities. See, I wouldn't want to compare, you know, I wouldn't want to compare one of like this. I wouldn't want to compare this name brand one here at pharmacy five to this generic brand one at pharmacy one. That might give me, you know, a representation that is, is not correct or, you know, or I can't tell. Is it the pharmacy conditions or is it the fact that the name brand and the generic have different amounts in them? Okay, we don't want to do that. We definitely want to pair by that. Okay. So that is why we want to pair it. And so our uh, want to define the way in which we're comparing or pairing since it's, or subtracting since it's not kind of an understood after minus before. So average difference in milligrams of active ingredients in the generic pill minus the name brand pill. So I had defined that there. My subscript did as well. OK. 
Okay. There's my null and alternative. Randomly selected pill stated. 10 is less than 10% of all such. You know, but I wonder if this is randomly selected pharmacies. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if it's pharmacies and pills. Because you would want both. You wouldn't want to just always take the pills on the top. Yes. From each pharmacy. Okay, so the pharmacies were not. Oh, it also says they randomly selected 10 pharmacies. Ah, so they did both. Okay, gotcha. Pharmacies and pills. 10 is less than 10% of all such pharmacies and pills, <laughs> I guess. Um, each pair is independent of each other. Okay, so each set of pills is independent of each other. And here is our uh, item. Let's check and see what you have here for the label down below. Difference in active ingredient in milligrams, and then make sure it's defined the way you subtracted, generic minus the name brand or however it was that you subtracted. And that is the difference in active ingredient. Each piece of data in here is a difference, not an active ingredient amount. Okay, nearly normal model applies. T test repaired data. There is your T score, P value, and must include the DF. So let's check our conclusion. Since the P value is less than alpha, I reject that the mu of G minus N is zero. Okay, and so this was just all extra wording because I don't want to duplicate. I duplicate it down here. Or I say down here. Now I have evidence to conclude that. There is the average difference in the active ingredients in the two brands of pills, or two types of pills. Or you could say that the average of the generic minus is, diff is not equal to zero. Okay. All right. Let's go to the multiple choice problems here. Now, I have shown you how to do these all by hand. But seeing as how these are multiple choice ones, you know, and you want to do things as quickly as possible, let's use our calculator. So they're giving you this information. Um, you would do a, you would see that those are paired by student, and you do a T interval. So I would have just gone into my calculator and done a T interval, and then come down here to my multiple choices and see which one gives me that interval that I got in my calculator. Okay. I mean, that's the test-taking strategy way, way to do it. Now, I got a question, um, a very good question earlier today, and it was this. Since it is stated to be normally distributed, why are we not doing a Z interval? Okay? That's a great question. And the answer is you use the Z intervals if you have the whole entire population of all students' standard deviation. And do we have the population standard deviation? No. We only have four students. I mean, so that's a heck of a bunch of um, variability we're going to have going on if I have only the standard deviation from four students. So T interval for sure. Okay? All right. And then down here, this is a back to a proportion problem. And so this is really kind of neat if you think about it. Just by putting an envelope up to your um, head and thinking, okay, what is this, what is this, what is this, and you have four choices, star, cross, circle, or square, how frequently will you get it correct just by pure random guessing? 25% of the time, so our null hypothesis is going to be that 25% of the time we will get it correct just by pure randomness, even if I don't have ESP, I want to see if I have significantly more, so my tail will be a greater than. Here are the sample results. 120 out of the 400. So you're going to go and do a one proportion Z test in your calculator and put that information in. It's quickest to do it that way. Now I have it all written out here by hand, but again, multiple choices go for quick and easy calculator all the way. P value is that much there. Okay. All right. So now I want you to work on while I come around, uh, work on the warm up on pages 32 and 33.